Grab a blanket if you're watching the story on your couch. Can you imagine the iron will it would take to train in ice water to set world records for holding your breath? You might if that was the only way you knew to still your mind and find a release from the illnesses of depression and addiction. For Amber Fillery, ice-free diving means wellness. As the world observes Mental Health Awareness Month, carte blanche asks what it's been about this extreme discipline that has helped the remarkable woman. I have really struggled to live on earth, on land, but when I'm in the water, I'm relaxed, I'm calm, and the voices in my head stop. Yeah, it makes me feel good, it makes me feel whole. What you've just seen is Amber swimming in the icy waters of a lake in Norway. A far cry from the warm swimming pool waters back here in Cape Town. When you go down in your dive, no arms at all, level out. Start with the stroke on the Amber Fillery is an extreme athlete and world record holder for the longest swim under ice while holding her breath. Her journey to success was marred by extreme highs and lows as she battled with depression, addiction and an eating disorder on the way. Fillory's love for water started when she was a little girl. Her earliest memory is of a tidal pool at St. James in Cape Town. Apparently when I was little, I would run in St. James and jump in the, the deep end, you know, to my parents' horror. So I think from a little child, I've, I've really liked the water. At school, she excelled at swimming. She was awarded Western Province Colours when she was 13. Tell me about the preparation and the compromises that you had to make for your swimming career. It's training twice a day, it's giving up a lot. So I only swam up until standard seven, standard eight, and then I started with anorexia and my swimming coach didn't want me to swim anymore. Let's talk a little bit about your battles with eating disorders. How did that start? There was a lot of like competition with the girls and there was quite a lot of eating disorders. I wasn't really happy at school and I think in some ways it started as a way of controlling everything. It kind of span out of control. It was never enough, like no matter how much weight I lost, it just wasn't sort of enough. After leaving school, Fillory studied fine art but didn't finish her degree. Her eating disorder spilt over into alcohol addiction and she spent most of her 20s in and out of rehab. Depression took over and thoughts of suicide haunted her, something she speaks freely about. Most athletes who suffer from depression or drug dependency usually shy away from talking about it openly in fear of ruining their reputation. But not Amber. It's like waking up and, and it's like... You don't want to be alive. No matter how good everything is around you, it takes things away and it ruins opportunities, it ruins friendships. Fillory lived in England for a while where she attended AA meetings and managed to hold down a job as a lifeguard at a London pool. This was her first experience with ice water. You know, it would snow or the water would ice over and learning the benefits of cold water swimming, that, they, that it's good for your mental health. Fillory's love for water was the one constant factor in her life. Back in South Africa, she tried free diving, a sport that requires strong mental preparation. In order to hold your breath, it's such a mental discipline. So I can't have any thoughts of negativity or anything. Although Fillory did no serious training in free diving, she excelled at it, setting three national records at the championships in Port Elizabeth in 2015. Her next goal was to break the world record for free diving under ice, a hostile environment she was not used to. On her second attempt at a lake in Finland, she lost her direction under the ice and got tangled in the line. I was really upset. I didn't handle the situation at all well. I was devastated. After two failed attempts, Amber was back in competition mode, this time to Norway, where she was set to break the Guinea's world record in ice-free diving. Fillory had only three months to get ready for the world record. With the help of swimming coach Alan Stubbs, she embarked on the challenge of her life. It's hard enough to swim 50 metres underwater with breaststroke. Then on top of it, she's going to be in freezing water. The worst is she has to blow out half of her air before she goes, because otherwise she'll be too buoyant to stay under the water. The next step was getting accustomed to the water reaching sub-zero temperatures. 
Ice swimmer Ryan Stramrud, an extreme athlete who swam the ice mile in Antarctica in minus one degree water, introduced Fillory to the ice bath. I'm standing next to an ice bath at a fish factory here in Cape Town. Sounds strange, right? But this is as close as ice swimmers will get to practicing for this extreme sport. How are you feeling, Amber? I love it. So when you jump into these extreme cold situations, the mind just implements this pain, panic and fear. And those come together extremely quickly to accentuate self-doubt, denies you the ability of rational thought. That is why we sit in these ice tubs, because you need to understand that process and how you're going to overcome the different instincts that kick in. It was the 29th of February last year, the day of the Guinness World Record at a frozen lake in Norway. A video team, a judge, witnesses and safety divers were all on standby. I walked out onto the ice. In your I, costume? No, I had a, like a little poncho over me with my costume underneath. And then amazingly that day it snowed, so it was perfect. And then I took a breath of air and dived under. I had absolutely no feeling of water temperature or anything. I was totally in my head and trying to keep it as still as possible because it's like my private journey. At 47, Fillory set a new Guinness World Record in the female category. She swam 70 meters on one breath under 34 centimeters of ice, wearing only her bikini, goggles and a cap. I'm so happy. It was successful and it was a great dive. Yeah, so I'm super, super happy and shaking. <laughs> Dr. Sean Gotchok works with ice swimmers in Cape Town who claim that cold water swimming has improved their mental health. A number of these athletes have reported mood disorders like depression and anxiety um, and the cold water is well documented to improve people's moods. When they come out of the water they get an endorphin rush so immediately post swim and in days to weeks after these swims um, it improves their mood and it makes them feel better. When you have to be in the moment you purely focus on what you're doing and in that moment it actually brings down the anxiety levels because you cannot focus on the negativity. Dr. Oshenka Padayachi, a psychiatrist at a Milneton clinic, says depression is the cause of eating disorders and substance abuse. When you look at eating disorders, when you look at um, substance use, they're all very much manifestations of a very central core. So what the individual will try to do is find a way that's going to help them regulate their emotions. It's a way of not having to deal with the pain that they feel. And depression is underlying, you know, for all of those things. The right medication has helped Fillory manage the depression, but addiction remains a battle. For now, she has a goal to achieve. My aim is next year, February in Norway, I would like to do 100 meters, but that's maybe a bit ambitious, but otherwise at least 90 meters, so I can break the current men's record. But it's not just about achieving the record, that I can maybe reach out and through my achievements, help other people achieve their dreams, their goals. That makes me feel a bit more excited. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.